Well, we're heading over to Garage Mahal. Oh, fun. We haven't been over there in a while. Not since um, yesterday. <laughs> well, we're over there all the time, but <laughs> what we haven't been doing is showing anybody projects over there. But one thing about projects is they tend to stack up and... Um, oh, boy, do that. And they're in the way of each other. And so it's like we can't work on the railroad grade because the tough shed's in the way, and we can't move the tough shed until the shelves get... Yeah, anyway. We have moved the tough shed. We did. <laughs> that was one of the projects. And then uh, as we were getting ready to, to put shelves into all these other things, magically a Wayne 615 gas pump uh, magically appeared in Wyoming. Of course. <laughs> We've been looking everywhere for one because yes. I used to have one years ago and I've been desperately and, and She's been saying you really need to get the one back that was stolen, and of course you can't you get the can't one do that, but a back that was stolen. Replacement. A reasonable replacement. And so we found one uh, at a good price in, in Wyoming, and so suddenly that got moved to the front burner from no burner. At all. Anyway, <laughs> we're just finishing up restoration of the Wayne 615 gas pump. Uh, and then we can move on to some other uh, garage ball <laughs> projects. Uh -huh. So check this out. This is the Wayne 615 gas pump. <laughs> and so here it is, a Wayne 615 visible gas pump. What an antique. <laughs> what an antique. It's, it's rough. Uh, they, you know, we used to have a grading system. This would qualify as rough but restorable. There you go. Which is one notch above basket case. Yes, but we love it. But well above parts only. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not that bad. It's not as bad as it actually looks. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I don't think it's as bad as it looks. Elbow actually grease looks. comes to mind. Elbow grease comes to mind. It's going to need some parts. Yes. But as it happens, parts are readily available, so as long as your main castings are good, you're really, you're really there. So we ran into a bunch of these at the Peterson. Yes, we did. Look at Los those. In Los Angeles, and I was just going nuts because I love visible gas pumps. And it was like, we have just got to get one to replace the one that went missing 10 years ago. 20 years ago! Oh, yeah. Good head. 20 years ago, this one went missing. But I found this one years ago and restored it back in the 1960s. Oh my goodness. So this whole piece of business started on an old car tour to Zion Canyon in 1967. Oh my. And so in coming through Zion Canyon, we left Zion Canyon, went up Highway 89, mm -hmm. right through your neck of the woods. Yes. Up through San Pete County and whatnot. But on Highway 89 is Junction, Utah, beautiful little rural town with all these old houses. And as it happens, a couple of old abandoned gas stations. Boy, I feel like I'm right at home. And one heavily remodeled old gas station. That's what they do in those places. <laughs> That's it. But, but behind it, the reason you can tell it's remodeled is behind it is part of the old original gas station. These days, they keep their above-ground storage tanks in here. But when I came by here in 67, this entire building was full of gas pumps. And there was about 30 Wayne 615 visible gas pumps. So after a good deal of negotiating, I bought one for 20 bucks. Oh my goodness. <laughs> And there it is. This is in the Cottonwood Mall. Do you remember the Cottonwood? The, co the one that has it all, the Cottonwood the Mall. The Cottonwood Mall. This was that same car group, the Veterans Car Club. And this is the gas pump that I was in that building. And I took it home and completely restored it and put it in the car show with all these Model A's and such. Originally, it was an Indian gas because there were globes in the building but I could not talk the guy out of a globe, so I had to go looking for a new globe. The upside of that is in 1967, they were just everywhere. Oh yes. Because these pumps, the calculating pumps, used globes and they were still in active use. And they were starting to be replaced in the late 1960s. So I made a couple of phone calls and then trundled on out to the Holly Oil Refinery oh in North Salt Lake. <laughs> and went to their salvage yard out there because the guy said they had globes. 
They had uh, Beeline Gas. Oh, boy. Uh, that was their Utah brand. And Frontier Gas. Mm. Rare and to go. Rare and to go. And that was originally their Wyoming brand, but it had spread all over the place. Anyway, I went out into the salvage yard, and there was about, I would guess, 200 of these things. Oh, gee. Just sitting there. And the guy said, help yourself to anything you want. Take them all. I don't care. And I said, I just need one. <laughs> Stupid me. Um... So I just grabbed one of these things for my pump and left the other 200 behind, which is kind of silly because these days they go for over $1,000 as you much as... You needed a crystal ball, <laughs> not just a globe. <laughs> so I walked away from a quarter of a million dollars worth of globes I could just have. That's, that's collecting for you. So is that the one on top of your pump there? That's the one right Ooh. out of the oil refinery wow. and stolen out of the driveway some 20 years ago. Oh, gee. <laughs> Jeez, people. Now, this guy's a little bit rougher than the one I got out of Junction. Yes. Uh, in fact, it's a lot oh. rougher. Oh, dear. But I feel like I have experience yes. in putting one of these things together. So I started by dismantling the jar. The visible part on the top is called the jar. And that came apart, nothing really salvageable up there except the top casting. And then there's the skins. They have to be restorable because they're just not available as reproduction. So I got those off of there and we'll have to figure out some way to patch and rebuild those. And that's what a, a visible gas pump looks like with all the, the stuff removed. This is the basic mechanism here. So went ahead and cleaned up and repainted the overflow and the fill tubes. Wasn't too worried about the internal mechanism because we're not going to use it. So of course it's perfect and works just fine. <laughs> it's the way of things. So the first thing I replaced were the support rods. These are new replacement brass support rods from Fix Gas Pump Restoration. They've got a nice website and stuff. Anyway, they make parts for these things. And these brass support rods are better than the steel because they're not going to rust away like the old ones did. And I think they look kind of spiffy. They look really neat. Of course, we also needed a replacement glass cylinder. And glass cylinders go for well over $1,000, but Vix has a plastic one mm. for like 250 There you go. So we replaced it with a, an acrylic cylinder. And it looks just great. It looks and fine. Vix says he has one outdoors and... It looks like the day it was new, so we're, we're assuming it's all going to be fine with a, an acrylic cylinder on there instead of glass. So with that all in place, we could reinstall the top casting, which was in really good shape and cleaned up just fine. Now you can see it's got a window in the middle for the electrical system to light up the gas so you can see how much gas you're putting in the car. Had to remove the window to put the gallon markers in there. And then you had gone ahead and cleaned up and restored the gallon markers. They turned out really nice. But cleaning those up was a pain in the behind. We worked on them for like two days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a project, but boy, did they turn out nice. And then you went ahead and cleaned up the oh, nozzle. That made the markers look like uh, kindergarten. That was a difficult one. That thing, it turned out great, but you were on that for a couple of days, cleaning off the tarnish and paint and crap. The one thing we couldn't break loose was the steel casting here uh, that originally attached it to the hose. So we hauled that over to Steve's house and he took a torch to it. And as it turns out, that finally broke loose the rust on this, uh, this pipe fitting that had been screwed into the nozzle. Stars. Look at that, yay! And then of course you went ahead and cleaned up the builder's plates. Right, and I tried to keep them original. I applied an antiquing technique rather than try to paint them the way they would have been originally. Yeah, I don't think it looks good to take it too far. It just looks like a reproduction pump. I want it to have the look and feel of an original pump. And so I think this is way better. And there was a big chip out of that porcelain. I had to paint it. Yeah, and it matches perfectly. You can't even tell where it's been patched. And so now we're ready for the top dome. Uh, the top dome that was on the original pump was completely unsalvageable. Apparently the pump had been laying on its side for years in the mud and had rusted completely through the dome here. So there was no saving that. Also, this pump had never been electrified. It had never had a globe on it. Instead, they just have this little dome on top of the dome 
to fill in the hole where the globe would normally be. Now, fortunately, Vic offers a complete replacement uh, top dome. Oh, for that the looks pump. nice. Perfect. Yeah. Brand new. So we bagged one of those and I got paint on it. And here I'm just test fitting it to make sure it's going to work. Lines up perfectly, just like it was made for this thing, uh, which it was. <laughs> Now I also had to fit this with electrical conduit and wiring as it had never been wired originally. Here again, Vix offers a, a conduit kit. Oh, look at that. So we bagged one of those. Uh, the one thing that the kit didn't come with was any mounting hardware. So I suggested let's go down to Home Depot and see what we can find. And right there in the electrical department, <laughs> might as well have just said that this was mounting hardware for the conduit kit. It's a Rayco two and a half inch conduit beam clamp. It looks like it was made for that pump. I'm fairly convinced it was. <laughs> At any rate, in pretty short order, I had conduit going up to the electrical fixture. And notice here on Vic's kit, it now comes with a little stanchion to lift the light bulb up into the center of the globe. Originally, these were mounted below the globe, and it lights up so much better having the bulb up in the center of the globe this way. So that's an improvement. At any rate, we were also working on the blue Mustang while all this was going on, putting the fuel injection in that down at the Mustang Ranch. And there, sitting on a table in Brent's office, was a Frontier Gas Globe. Of all the things. Of all the things. And we told him the story about the gas pump and everything. And he says, well, if you want it, take it. I don't have any need for it. So we bagged another free globe, <laughs> just like with the original one years and years ago. And doesn't that look nice with the bulb I in the middle? I love it. That's neat. That looks so much better than having the light bulb mounted inside the dome. Of course, now there's a small problem. <laughs> there, there's no skins on this thing. And so the skins needed to be restored. Originally, I had sandblasted the one back in the 60s, but I wasn't quite sure these could survive sandblasting. They Not had some pretty- much there. <laughs> yeah, there were a few places where it was rusted completely through. Lace. Yeah, lace. <laughs> So uh, you uh, you helped me patch with uh, some patching stuff, and we filled in the holes and uh, about a whole can of Bondo, and slowly but surely they came around. A lot of sanding primer, went through a lot of primer, finding all the rough spots, and more sanding, more primer, more Bondo. <laughs> but eventually we had a, a working set of skins here. Considering what we had to work with, that doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty darn good and ready for final paint. So we put fire engine red on there. Oh boy, is that red. Boy, is that red. But I wanted to try to match the original pump as close as humanly possible. And with the color on there, boy, does that thing come to life. So now for the decorations. We've got to put on the plaques and the signage. And a replacement pump handle from Vix. The original one was just missing. And there it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, slid into place. Celebration time. I say we head down to Chili's and have a couple of brewskis and a burger. There we go. That's our typical way of celebrating a finished project. That's hard to believe that's the same pump. You know, if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it. Anyway, here it is, and good documentary proof on the channel. A finished Wayne 615 visible gas pump. Well, we now have a Wayne 615 we gas pump. We certainly do. Again, and it lights up, and it looks really good. And, yes. And uh, sort of like having reality back in a, in, uh, in a proper, the, the planets of a line. That's and, what we were intending. And right? everything's now good. There is a balance in the force. There's a balance in the force. <laughs> Well, if you, if you haven't been to the channel or the Facebook page, do pop over to one other or both. And uh, <laughs> while you're over there, you can give us a like on Facebook or uh, when you're on the YouTube channel. Of course, what would really be neat is if you would subscribe yeah. to the YouTube channel. And the really easy way to subscribe to the YouTube channel is to click on the famous giant blue button. Yes. Are you ready for it? Here it goes. Zoink! <laughs> Big round blue button says subscribe, does exactly what it says, makes you a subscriber. 
but we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here again in a few days with some more massive screwing around. We'll see you then. See ya. Bye bye. bye.